Hi, everyone. I've got Jeff Clark with me once again. Jeff, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Mike. It's great to be back with you this week. We've got a lot to talk about, but I guess you need to uh, uh, tell us something first. Yeah, you know, um, there have been a lot of people lately impersonating me, a whole lot, and it's more and more every single month. Uh, there are a whole bunch of fake Twitter accounts, fake Facebook pages. And if you look in the comments, there are people that will uh, pretend to be me. And then they post a uh, comment with a WhatsApp uh, phone number or a phone number or an email address. And I will never publish a phone number or an email address. The phone number that we publish is if you go to goldsilver.com, there's a phone number there. That is the only phone number. I'm not going to publish any email addresses. So if our viewers could do us a little favor here, when you see somebody posting a phone number or something like that, give them a call. Waste as much <laughs> of their time as you possibly can. Make them think that you think it's me that they're talking to. <laughs> no, it's not because it's Rank not right back. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, just burn these guys that are trying to burn you is the thing, because uh, they're, uh, you know, this is really creepy having all these imposters out there. And uh, we can't do anything about it on our YouTube channel, except shut off the comments. And if we do that, it stifles all of the discussion. And there is so much going on in the comments that's great. We just don't want to do that. It hurts our channel. And uh, it hurts that open discussion that's going on. Uh, but please don't fall for this. These are bad people uh, trying to, uh, you know, uh, ride on a momentum that we have. And they're, uh, it's fraudulent. They're basically stealing from people. So don't fall for it. Call them up. Waste their time answer their email, just string them along like they're stringing you along. Uh, right. That would be great if they could do that. So what have you got for us today, Jeff? We've got a lot on the calendar here. We're going to jump right in here and, and move uh, probably pretty fast today, Mike. So this first is the article of the day, and this is from Zero Hedge, and it's the CEO for MasterCard, MasterCard $350 billion market cap company, one of the largest credit card systems in the world. He says that the SWIFT payment system, which is U.S.-based, may be replaced by CBDCs, uh, central bank digital currencies, within five years. That is quite a statement for someone from such a large company uh, to make. So, Mike, what was your uh, reaction to seeing this? Well, you know, um, I, I've been doing research on CBDCs and uh, a little while ago, I came across the uh, American Banking Association sent an open letter to the Federal Reserve uh, saying that if they come out with a CBDC, it could collapse the banking system. Because if they take all of the uh, uh, deposits away from the banks, these deposits, you know, because that's what would happen. A whole lot of the deposits, uh, not as much business accounts, but consumer deposits will all move over to being uh, in a Federal Reserve wallets in your phone instead of in your checking account. And when it's not at the bank, then they can't um, use that for fractional reserve lending, and it could collapse the banking system. That was basically the gist of this open letter from the uh, American Banking Association. Mm. And uh, so uh, the the article said that this is going to take years to figure out. Well, five years is years. <laughs> so right. we have a certain amount of time left to get prepared. And, uh, you know, this isn't going to happen tomorrow. Uh, the release of central bank digital currencies uh, for consumer use from the Federal Reserve, from the ECB, these things will be delayed a while while they try and figure out how to do this without collapsing the entire banking system. Uh, and so uh, this is worrying, but it's also good to, to know that we've got about five years. <laughs> so, uh, but once they do this, the, the CBDCs, um, if they are a programmable currency, they can just be flat out evil. First of all, they get you into their system 
where they can uh, inflate the currency supply as much as they want, cause as much inflation as they want, and you can't get out of it. You really don't have a choice. They can coordinate all of the banks, central banks much easier. And when they do that, they are stealing purchasing power from you. They're stealing it from you and transferring it to whomever gets the currency first. And uh, so it's fraud, it's theft, it is immoral. And, you know, I'd like to say shame on them. Didn't anybody teach them when they were a kid that it's a bad thing to steal? You're not supposed <laughs> to steal from right. others. Uh, and so uh, at least we've got a warning. We've got a little bit of time to get ready. And, you know, I sort of opt out of the system, obviously, by buying gold and silver. This opts me out of uh, saving my wealth in a currency that they can constantly devalue, causing inflation. Right. That's a good point because CBDCs may still be fiat based, meaning they can be devalued and, and uh, debased and all that. Well, they so. will be. This is a central bank digital currency, and that's the only thing the central bank issues is fiat currency. What most people don't know is that about 90% of all the dollars uh, that are out there are not created by the Federal Reserve. They're created by the, uh, the you know, you've got currency in circulation as, as a portion of base currency, and the public comes in contact with that. You've got bank reserves, which the public never comes in contact. Those dollars never leave the central, the, the Federal Reserve. They're in accounts at the Federal Reserve and the banks just pay each other and borrow from each other and lend to each other. And they settle accounts every day with, with that currency, but we never see it. The currency that we see is currency in circulation and bank credit. And about nine out of every $10 that the public sees is bank credit. And the banks create this. Not it's not a liability of the Federal Reserve, so it's not actually um, backed by government fiat. This is banked backed by the banks um, uh, having a lien against your home, your car. That, that's what backs uh, the dollars that are in your checking account: is your home, your car, and everybody else's homes, cars, credit card debt. Every time uh, somebody takes out a new loan and creates more debt, that creates dollars. And that's where the currency supply comes from. Yes, very good point. And you know, the best way, of course, to opt out of that system is like Mike said, is to own physical gold and silver. That's uh, how we're opting out. So even if it even if it's coming assets. down the pike someday, if it's still fee based. Yeah, just yeah. Don't, don't save in dollars. That's uh, you've, Right now, it's a good idea to have some dollars set aside, some cash, because uh, right now we're seeing the stock markets finally deflate. And, uh, and uh, one day you're going to see gold and silver just shoot for the moon. Uh, but right now there's going to be some stuff on sale uh, very soon. You know, I, I bought my ranch recently uh, and I actually did take on some debt uh, because uh, debt, when you're using it uh, for leverage in a business, can be a good thing. But if you are not, um, if, if you're borrowing to fund a business or fund a bunch of cash flow real estate, like apartment buildings and things like that, debt can be a very good thing, but it can come around and bite you if you're not careful with it. Uh, you know, you, you're familiar with margin call in the stock market. And that's what debt can do to you. If you're the value of your assets drop below the value of your loan, you need to check your home loan and make sure that there's no clause in there where they can uh, uh, you know, foreclose on you. Uh, if you're just uh, using debt, if, if the banks own you and you don't own the bank, uh, then the debt, you're a victim of debt. You're a victim of this monetary system. Uh, the dollars that you use to take out a mortgage and buy a house, you don't own the house. You're renting the house for the next 30 years from the bank who actually owns the house. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Right. And, and they're going to sell their, they buy the house. And then depending on the interest rate, they're going to sell it to you in a rent to own scheme over a 30 year period for two, three, or four times what they paid for it. <laughs> you know, right. It's, it's really, it's a very creepy system when you really look at it.
and yeah. it doesn't save people. And the thing to worry about with digital central bank currencies, not only do they trap you in this system where they're able to inflate and, and steal purchasing power from you and direct it wherever they want, uh, if it's being directed toward you, you're a beneficiary of the system. You are receiving stolen property that the uh, banks actually stole from other people, the people that are the victims of the system. But um, uh, it can also be used to uh, control you, to train you like an animal, you know, system of rewards and punishment. If it's programmable, they can create sales tax that's personalized. If they think you're drinking too much, they can double you, you know, you're out at a restaurant and they double the tax on each consecutive drink. They can do anything like that, that they want. And that is what's scary. If, if they really don't like you, they can just turn you off as a citizen, uh, make it so that you can't spend anything on anything. If they don't want you to travel, they ban you from all air rail and, uh, and, you know, Uber and everything else. Uh, they ban you from being able to pay for a hotel. Uh, stuff like that. So uh, this is really creepy. It's a bad road to go down. We've got five years to figure this out, but I urge everybody to learn as much as they can about it. Yes, very good, Mike. It is scary indeed. So make sure you have at least some of your wealth outside of the system, I think is the message. Yeah. So, um, well, on to our uh, tweet of the day here, Mike, speaking of central bankers, this is from our friends at Wall Street Silver. And this is uh, this is classic, Mike. The host yeah. says to Christine Lagarde, who's the ECB uh, president, how will you bring down the balance sheet? <laughs> Christine Lagarde says it will come down in due course. The host says how? And she says in due course. She never answers the question. <laughs> right. She, she doesn't know caught. how to answer the question. She can't answer the question. She was caught like a deer in the headlights. There is no plan here. Uh, this is and. This is the thing about not letting, not allowing the free market to work. And the thing is, when the crashes happen, they go, the free market isn't working. People need to look that these are the people that are responsible for the crash by trying to manipulate the market. They do not allow for a free market. Um, currency, you know, US dollars, euros, whatever, is 50% of every transaction. If they're controlling the quantity of currency in the system, and the uh, cost of that currency, the interest rate, that means that every transaction is being centrally planned. It's centrally controlled by these entities. We do not have a free market. We haven't had a free market uh, in the United States since the Federal, Res you know, the Federal Reserve Act was passed in 1913, but they actually opened their doors for business in 1914. That was the last time we actually had a free market in the United States. And every time they create a bubble that then uh, bursts and, and collapses, they scream that the free market isn't working, and then they manipulate it twice as much as before, setting us up for a bigger bubble and a much bigger crash. And yes. so we have to stop uh, supporting and going along with these people. The free market is the sum total of the trillions upon trillions of transactions that are going on in society trying to uh, find the right price discovery, it's called, and, uh, and, and, and it balances all of the sectors of the economy. These are the people that are responsible for all of the imbalances and the crashes that we see, and it's just getting worse and worse. Uh, yes, it really yeah. was a deer in the headlights moment for her. Like it was a real <laughs> clue, a real insight that she really doesn't know how the debt is going to come down. They don't know anything else except to spend and overspend. Uh, that's right. a scary thought that someone that's in charge of the system over there actually has no plan and no idea how to bring down the debt. Well, another thing, you know, uh, these people that are so arrogant that they think that they, they can know better than the free market, uh, which is right. all of those trillions upon trillions of transactions uh, that manipulate and destroy price discovery. And they are very, very dangerous. They are as dangerous as armies. You know, they are as dangerous as Russia is, as uh, we are with our uh, nuclear arsenal. Uh, they can cause poverty and death for untold millions. Right now, you know, they, there's this discussion of MMT, the magic money tree, or, or 
uh, modern monetary theory. Uh, and it's, it's just more uh, currency creation from nothing or from indebting us in the future. You know, we just passed over $300 trillion of debt. We're at 350% of GDP globally. I'm talking about government and private debt now and corporate and so on. Uh, and so uh, these entities that are allowed to create currency by just typing it in, into a computer, they're just typing more numbers into the number supply because that's all it is, is a supply of numbers. They type more, it dilutes the currency supply, stealing purchasing power from everybody, but they think that they can try these experiments and that if it goes, what happens if it goes wrong? What happens if modern monetary theory causes a total collapse of society in a modern dark age? This is very, very scary. And you need to be very careful of these people that have this arrogance and hubris that think that they know better than everybody else. Yeah, history is going to show, in my opinion, that, that this obviously doesn't work and they're going to be responsible for uh, basically causing some type of monetary reset, crash, you know, whatever you want to call it. So right. uh, it's important to stay out of the out of that system as much as possible. But uh, well, if you're liking this video, please hit that like button for us down there and the notification uh, bell as well, because that does help us out a lot. Thank you. Uh, so, Mike, on to the uh, tweet or uh, this would be the chart of the day. And this is from Winston Wolf on Twitter. Uh, he says silver is really cheap relative to pretty much every other asset. And this chart he shows, he's got a thread here, but this first chart is just silver to the Dow Jones. And yeah, it's quite and amazing yeah, how, yeah. how cheap silver is relative to the stock market right now. It's actually at historic lows, Mike. Well, the amazing thing about this chart is he's got it going all the way back to 1904. And so you have a lot of history here. And you can see that up until 1922, um, the, the average was right about um, 0 0.01. Uh, and, and now we're, we're far down below that. But, you know, I wanted to sort of zoom up on this. And I did my own um, silver S&P. So it's, it's uh, taking the price of silver divided by the S&P 500 index. And there... We are at 0 0.005. So if you uh, go to uh, one is 20 times more. In other words, if you sell one share of stock right now and you just ride silver until history repeats, because it will, it's just taking patience um, and it gets to 0.1, you've got uh, 20 times gain. At 0.2, you've got 40 times at 0.3, you've got 60 times. And up at the top of this chart at 0.4, you have 80 times more gains. At that point, if you sell your silver, you're going to get 80 shares of stock for each share that you sold. <laughs> I call that wealth cycles. I, I uh, developed it back in uh, uh, the early 2000s. And um, I, I, I'm, I will be releasing a book on it sometime soon. Uh, it does take patience for these cycles to play out, though. They're very long-term cycles, but they're inevitable. And what I would do is be uh, putting uh, sell stops at, you know, and sell in tranches at like 0 0.1, 0 0.15, 0 0.2, 0 0.25, 0 0.3, 0 0.35. And you sell like 20% of your holdings and then and convert it back into stocks. And then... Uh, if it goes up, the remainder goes up uh, more than what you actually sold. And so you sell another 20% and then another 20% of the remainder always. So you still have some of your position left, even all the way up at the top. But we don't know. I mean, um, in 1980, that was just, that was a panic into gold and silver um, because gold and silver had only been a fiat currency for eight and a half years. Uh, and uh, people were worried about this, and we had all of these problems. Uh, uh, the the uh, Arab oil embargo, Iraq, I mean, Iran, uh, the hostage crisis, and, um, and raging inflation, 
And so people rushed into gold and silver, and that's what caused that peak. Well, uh, a lot of it was greed driven, though. Fear is a much more powerful emotion. And this time, it could be a fear driven spike, and it could go way past that point four. It is entirely possible. As you see from that first chart that goes back to 1904, uh, throughout time, these things swing back and forth to these extremes. Uh, and they don't go up constantly. When something looks like it's going up all the time, that's the dollar going down. It's not the thing going up. And so, uh, uh, yeah, this is a very, very powerful tool that people should follow. Yes, it could. it's potentially very exciting when that reversal does come. And like you said, history shows another reversal is coming. We just have to be prepared for it. Uh, like right. our friend David Morgan has said, 90% of the move happens in the last 10% of time. So exactly. uh, it'll come. Just be ready for it. I think it's coming pretty soon, too. Uh, well, Mike, on to our meme of the day. And this is from our friend uh, Peter Spino over at GoldSeek, a good friend of ours. And uh, he yeah. shows a very interesting survey result here that's uh, <laughs> pretty funny. So. Mike, yep. uh, share this with us. Well, is inflation affecting your family? And the people that said 124% of the audience said no. 195% of the audience said yes. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank everybody for watching. And we'll see you next time, Jeff. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Mike. See you next time. At goldsilver.com, we have a price match guarantee, free shipping, and global storage options. Learn more about how to invest in precious metals at goldsilver.com.